Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the sermon this day is from the Holy Gospel of St. Luke, the 17th chapter. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Those are the words that you say when you're unclean, and there's no place else to turn for cleanliness. Those are the words that say when you're an absolute mess, when things just aren't going right, when those dark days come. When you try and try and try to untangle the awful, awful web, and there's seemingly no hope, when every other possibility can't and won't make you clean, there is one to whom you can always count on, always count on to make you clean, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke tells us that there were ten lepers, ten lepers who were unclean, and ten lepers who had no place else to turn to. First century leprosy, especially if you had it in a way that these ten had it, often meant sure death. Interestingly, leprosy also meant excommunication from the congregation. When you had leprosy as these ten did, few, if any of them, would have ever, ever really thought of going to the temple, of going there declared clean and showing themselves to the priests. But if they did, if they were cured, then the liturgical cleansing rite for leprosy would happen. And that liturgy included sacrifices. In the first sacrifice, two birds would be taken, probably sparrows. One would have its neck wrung over uh, some Water, the blood would drain down into the water and be gathered in an earthenware vessel. And then, then the second sparrow, he would be dipped in that blood and water. And then he would be released in a way announcing the healed man's cleanness and his return from social death back to life in the community. Then the cured leper would shave and wash his clothes and clean his body. And after all of that, then he had to wait a whole week. A week before he could go into the sanctuary, go back to church. But on the eighth day, on the eighth day, a lamb was sacrificed. The blood of the lamb was taken and some of it was wiped upon the cleaned leper himself. Whereas the majority of the blood would be taken and thrown against the altar in the rite of atonement. In the end of the sacrifices and the waiting, the cured leper was covered over with the blood of the lamb. His sin atoned for, splashed against the altar of God. And he could enjoy the Lord's food at the Lord's table. And finally, he would get to go home to his family. There were ten lepers who cried out to Jesus. They said, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon us. 
And St. Luke tells us that when Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And then Luke the physician says that as they went, they were cleansed. That is, their leprosy was gone. But one returned. One didn't go to the priests. One didn't go and find two sparrows. One wasn't covered over with that unblemished, spotless male lamb. For one, there was no blood splashed upon the altar in the temple. But rather, this, this one turned back. And Luke tells us that he came back praising God with a loud voice. That he came back and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet and he gave Jesus thanks. For in Christ, he also knew God was present for him. And bewilderment of all bewilderment, the guy was a Samaritan. <laughs> Samaritans, interestingly, wouldn't have been allowed into the temple anyway, even if they didn't have leprosy. Samaritans were unclean simply because they were Samaritans. As a matter of fact, if he would have gone into the temple area, he would have approached that temple area, and on the temple balustrade was a warning that threatened death to any foreigner who entered As Jesus had this encounter with these ten lepers and the one who came to him. In the Gospel of Luke, it's interesting that Jesus himself was on a journey. These things were happening, but, but ultimately his goal was to go to Jerusalem. There at Jerusalem, Jesus knew that he would be crucified. Jesus knew that he would die. I think that makes Jesus' words even all the more interesting for us. For he invited the cleansed leper, saying to him, Arise, journey, your faith has saved you. It was as if Jesus had said to him, Journey along with me. I am the Holy One. I am clean. And my cleanness cleanses all uncleannesses. You don't need any sparrows. You don't need a lamb. For behold, I am the Lamb of God. You don't need to go to the temple. Behold, I am the great high priest. And I am also the sacrifice. I will pour my blood out for you on the cross, not upon an altar, but the altar of the cross. And there your sins will be atoned for. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the words of Scripture. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, also purify your consciences from dead works to serve the living God. St. Paul's words and the actions of our Lord this morning should lead us to a question. Are you clean? Are you clean? Have you been baptized and, and yet find yourself so often in your thoughts, in your words, in your deeds, maybe daily, maybe even off and on throughout the day, maybe way too often, find yourselves 
unclean in your thoughts, in your words, and in your deeds. Maybe, maybe the works of the flesh that St. Paul reiterated for us today are too often evident in our own lives. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and then St. Paul says, and, and things like these. In other words, the list can go on. <coughs> Hear the word of the Lord. For it is written, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Lord, open your lips, dear Christian. Open your lips to confess your uncleanness in the words of the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And he always does have mercy. Jesus has this message for you who have been unclean and yet cry out in mercy to him. He says, my son, be attentive to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. You see that blessed little gift of holy baptism, that splashing sacramental water is the sure promise that Christ has atoned for your sin through his bloody atoning sacrifice, not just once, but for all and for all time. It is also the promise that Jesus actually hears and responds to your Kyrie, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. For this Jesus Christ is none other than the new and final temple in his own body. And as the psalmist says, that near his nail-pierced hands, there he has written your names upon his hand. Written for eternity. You see, the gift of faith that God has given you through hearing his word, it trusts that. It believes that. It hopes in that. And faith, faith gives thanks for all that, all that Christ has done for you. And where there is faith, there will also necessarily be the evidences of the fruit of the Spirit in your life and in this congregation. And what are these? Love. Joy. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Like the cured leper, you are covered over with the blood of the Lamb with a capital L. Your sin has been atoned for. Therefore, come. Come and enjoy the Lord's food at the Lord's table and go home today. Go home clean. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please rise. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.